right. Hello and good morning, everyone. I am Secretary Jennifer Barrier with the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry. Also joining me today is Inez Titus. She is the Deputy Secretary for the Department of Human Services, the Office of Income Maintenance. Our agencies have been working together to prepare individuals currently receiving unemployment benefits for the coming end to several federal pandemic unemployment programs. As many of you may be aware, this is the final week of the federal pandemic unemployment benefits. The Saturday, September 4th, federal program end date will affect individuals who are receiving benefits through the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. This program provides assistance to individuals who have lost their job due to the COVID-19 pandemic and who are not eligible for traditional unemployment. These individuals are gig workers, independent contractors, and business owners. The ending will also affect individuals who have exhausted their 26 weeks of unemployment compensation benefits and who have moved on to the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program. And lastly, it will affect individuals who receive the additional $300 a week, which is known as the Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program. So while there are individuals on unemployment compensation who will continue to receive their weekly benefits through uh, the unemployment compensation program, their benefits will be reduced by the additional $300 a week. These programs have literally been a lifesaver to Pennsylvanians. They've helped Pennsylvanians buy food, pay bills, get medicine, and pay for housing. And that money was also reinvested into local communities and helped businesses remain afloat and keeping the impact on the pandemic on our state, state economy to a minimal. Now we are experiencing a very differ, different economy than we were a year ago. The number of new unemployment compensation claims filed on average over the past few weeks is lower than our pre-pandemic post-recession rates. And I think we've all seen the help wanted advertisements that seem to be everywhere. Now I wanna be clear that when these unemployment benefits end this Saturday, we won't suddenly see that every business is fully staffed. Many individuals who remain unemployed cite specific hurdles as the reason that they haven't rejoined the workforce. Hurdles like the lack of childcare or the need for additional training. And while the federal unemployment benefits did a great job serving as a catch-all safety net during the peak months of the pandemic, we are now ready to return to a state where we address these hurdles with more specific assistance. That means instead of using unemployment benefits to resolve childcare issues, training needs, and health concerns, we're connecting individuals to specific programs like Child Care Works, PA Career Links, and disability benefits. That is why I'm glad that Deputy Secretary Titus is with us today because the Department of Human Services offers a range of programs that can provide help to many individualized needs. The Department of Liber Labor and Industry has been reaching out to unemployment benefit recipients over the past few weeks with information about human service programs as well as other options like food banks and utility assistance. We've compiled a great list of resources that's available on our website at uc.pa.gov. We want individuals affected by the end of the federal programs to be as prepared as possible. We want them to know that after this claim week ends on September 4th, they can file their weekly claim beginning on Sunday, September 5th but they will not be able to file claims for any week after September 4th because of the program end. We want them to know that they will continue to have access to the online systems so they can view historic data and important documents such as their tax returns. We want them to know that we will continue to work on resolving any claim issues they have to get them payments they are eligible to receive and that claims backdated to before September 4th can be filed until October 4th. We want them to know that our PUA hotline will remain in operation for two weeks after September 4th so that any outstanding questions can be answered 
And after that, individuals with PUA questions can call the regular UC hotline, which will remain open. And we want to, them to know that our fraud investigations will continue. We recently sent out an email containing frequently asked questions to unemployment benefit recipients, and we have additional information on uc.pa.gov. Most importantly, we want this transition to be smooth for individuals. While we cannot continue these federal programs, we are committed to assisting Pennsylvanians with finding the resources that can help them with their unique situation. Whether it's assistance with finding a job or support so you can return to the workforce, we are here to help. And on that note, I will turn things over to Deputy Secretary Titus for more information on the support that human services can provide. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for having me today. My name is Inez Titus, and I am the Deputy Secretary for the Department of Human Services Office of Income Maintenance. Many families, through no fault of their own, have seen their incomes decrease at, or lost entirely due to the COVID-19 pandemic and economic turndown. And while the federal unemployment programs may be ending, anyone who is still struggling to make ends meet or needs assistance should know that help is available. DHS oversees the administration of Pennsylvania's public assistance programs, and these programs help people to be able to go to the doctor, purchase food, pay rent, and utility bills. So I'd like to provide an overview of the programs that we offer. First, I want to discuss the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, or ERAP. Because of the Supreme Court's decision last week, there are currently no federal eviction mandatorium, moratoriums in place, either federally or statewide. Without these moratoriums, individuals and families may face imminent eviction as enhanced unemployment benefits lapse, the school year begins, and COVID-19 cases continue to rise. ERAP is designed to help people who have been adversely impacted by the pandemic with direct financial assistance to cover past due or upcoming rent and utility bills. ERAP is available to rental households who meet certain income thresholds and who are unable to pay rent because of lost jobs or income due to COVID-19. It can also be of use to find new housing for families or individuals who have been displaced due to the pandemic or are currently experiencing homelessness. For tenants experiencing hardships, the program can be intervention that helps get them back on track. But this program can help landlords and tenants as well by settling unpaid and or upcoming rental costs and providing stability for both tenants and landlords by keeping people housed and providing financial security. If a tenant is el eligible, both the tenant and the landlord benefit from the assistance provided. So if you are facing eviction or utility shutoffs, please apply for ERAP. The application process for ERAP varies by county, but, the Pencil, but Pennsylvanians can also visit www.dhs.pa.gov slash ERAP to learn how to apply regardless of where you live. Applications are being processed by all 67 counties and your county will work to determine your eligibility as quickly as possible. ERAP makes evictions preventable and they should be an absolute last resort. There is no reason to let this money go unspent. But ERAP is not the only public assistance program that DHS administers. Pennsylvanians who have lost health care coverage or are currently uninsured and need coverage for themselves or their children can apply for Medicaid or the Children's Health Insurance Program. Medicaid and CHIP provide coverage for routine emergency health services, tests and procedures, and prescriptions. COVID-19 testing and treatment are also covered by Medicaid and CHIP. Medicaid and CHIP enrolled in individuals throughout the year, so people needing health coverage can apply for those at any time. There are income limits for Medicaid, but all children can qualify for comprehensive health, vision, and dental coverage through
through CHIP, regardless of their parents' income. Pennsylvanians can also apply for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, also formerly known as food stamps, to be able to keep food on the table. SNAP helps more than 1.7 million Pennsylvanians purchase fresh food and groceries, helping families have access to nutritious foods. As the nation continues to face the COVID-19 pandemic, access to essential needs like food is more important than ever to keep vulnerable populations healthy. And if you have a family with children, you may be eligible for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, or TANF, which is an assistance program that is dedicated to helping low-income families become de independent. DHS administers these safety net programs so that people are able to meet essential needs during difficult times. DHS will not stop providing access to health care, rental assistance, food, and other essential services, especially as this health public health crisis and period of economic instability continues. These are all the things we need to live, and that's why public assistance is here, making sure that people in difficult situations are able to meet their life-sustaining needs. There should be no shame or stigma associated with asking for assistance, and no one should be afraid to ask for help. So if you need that help, please reach out today. Applications for ERAP, Medicaid, SNAP, and other assistance programs can be accessed or submitted online at www.compass.pa.us. SNAP and medical assistance applications can also be submitted over the telephone by calling 1-866-550-4355. Services are available at our county assistance offices in each county, or you can speak to a representative by calling the customer service centers at 215-560-7226 for Pennsylvania for Philadelphia residents, or 1-877-395-8930 for clients in all other counties. Pennsylvanians who need health insurance benefits but do not qualify for Medicaid can explore coverage offers, offers through Penny, the Commonwealth Health Insurance, health insurance Exchange. You do not need to know your own eligibility. We will compile or co calculate that for you. These are incredibly challenging times, but that's why DHS and these programs exist, to make difficult times a little easier so that we can emerge stronger on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Secretary Titus. I think that information was very helpful. Um, at this time, we are both available to take your questions. Uh, how large is the, oh, hello. Uh, how big is the backlog of unre unresolved unemployment cases today, and what's the message to Pennsylvanians waiting on weeks or even months of claims that are not uh, resolved yet? No, I'm glad you asked that question because we've actually made significant progress, I believe, since the last time that we've met. Um, I believe several months ago our backlog was approximately 325,000 cases. Since implementation of our new uh, modernized system, we have now uh, gotten that backlog down to 190,000 cases. So we're making significant progress. What I would tell the individuals who are waiting is that, you know, we are working as quickly as we can and we are making significant progress and we will get to you as quickly as possible and we really appreciate your patience. We will not rest or stop until your claim is addressed and until all individuals who are eligible for benefits uh, receive those benefits. With the end of the PUA system, are you expecting to see less fraud since that's where a lot of it began? Um, absolutely. You know, actually, the, the PUA fraud that took place in Pennsylvania mostly occurred in the fall of uh, last year. After we implemented identity verification protocols within that system, we noticed a significant drop in fraudulent claims in that system. So, um, you know, that's not as big of an issue right now with the PUA program, but I'm sure as we continue to clean up that program and close it out, we will, we will still continue to address those fraudulent claims.
Floyd that a lot of people who had a pending application simply received a, a letter saying that they were denied with no explanation and then so they now they have to appeal um, and large numbers of, of people suddenly finding out that they were denied did your agency just send out a huge batch of denials I mean what's does no, that, we does that ring a bell we, with you? that's part of the backlog that we adjudicated um, we adjudicated those claims and found that those individuals were not eligible for benefits I, I you know and I can't speak to specific letters or specific claims as to what the letters say but uh, my understanding is that they do have the right to appeal and to due process and those reasons should be contained in that letter Is it, there's been this perception that the, the benefits are keeping people from going back to work. You, you mentioned sort of vaguely that there are reason, you know, there's child care. Do you have, do you have, have you done surveys that, that you can say, you know, what percentage of the people who are now unemployed were unemployed because they have issues that, that are, are still pending and how many were just people who are 300 bucks a week was better than they were making? Right. Um, you know, I know that our career links, individuals that are career links have engaged individuals on, on, on unemployment and have questioned the reasons why they're not engaging for work again. And the, and the reasons have, have uh, varied from child care, from basically being fearful of this new variant that's ripping through the country. Um, there's many reasons. It's just not because of the unemployment benefits. And I think there's a lot of studies and other types of surveys being conducted now that show that, show that these unemployment benefits these additional benefits are not are not the sole cause for individuals uh, returning to work. Two part question here with the rise in case counts now some people may feel nervous about going back to work whether they're vaccinated or not. What would you say to those people who may think to turn to unemployment again. Can they get that if they choose to not go back to work because of COVID case counts. Uh, you know, at this point, we, uh, you know, after September 4th, we no longer have the federal unemployment benefits. So any case or any initial claim that we receive through the unemployment uh, program will have to be analyzed under our UC law and uh, determined on the facts of that individual situation. Um, at this point, you know, I, I think the governor's made it known that it's very important to, to be vaccinated and it's important for employers to ensure that they're following CDC guidance with regards to masking and social distancing where applicable. Why does the backlog exist? The backlog exists because when the pan pandemic hit, uh, back in March and April of 2020, our system was flooded with uh, a, an enormous amount, a records amount of unemployment compensation claims. At a time where we were staffed for low unemployment, we were at our lowest unemployment in the state uh, previously that, than we've ever had to my knowledge. But the backlog exists because of that tsunami of claims and also because the federal government asked us to stand up five additional programs that basically served a portion of the population that Pennsylvania has never served through its unemployment program. So we were flooded with individuals that we've never served before. So if somebody applies for unemployment comp, how quickly are they supposed to hear back from your agency? If it's a clean claim, uh, they will know right away whether they are eligible for benefits or not. Right away. So it's a, a process. They go into our system, they fill it out, and it's pretty much determined right away whether they're eligible or benefits or not. If there's issues that pop up, such as, you know, perhaps partial unemployment, or maybe there's a question as to their eligibility, that could further complicate the issue and might delay uh, the processing of benefits. But a clean claim, we can turn around uh, probably within two weeks. I don't understand why there's so many people out there saying that it's taken them weeks and weeks and weeks and months to hear back from your agency. There's a variety of, of reasons. The UC law is a complex law. There's reasons why individuals may not be eligible for unemployment. There's also reasons why unemployment might be contested for an individual. I know that one of the main reasons we have is refusal of suitable work or an employer uh, basically contesting the reason for the individual no longer working for the employer. So those are the two top reasons that typically flag a claim. Is the new system less user friendly than the old system? 
No, the new the new system is actually more intuitive and it operates more like the modern websites that we currently use, such as uh, you know paying a Comcast bill, filing, you know paying for a utility, something of that of that ma matter. But uh, you know, I think there was a bit of a learning curve with individuals initially being used to the old system and having to learn the new system. So. Um, I've heard from many individuals that the new system is less unwieldy and very easy to use. Do you have enough people to process claims? At this time, yes, we do. How many is that? I would have to get back to you with that number. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.